voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories, we tell the news from every perspective, covering every human angle. I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want to watch. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Hello and welcome to TVC News. This uh, gunmen suspected to be bandits have again attacked a Bukos local government area of Plateau State, killing seven locals and destroying several property. The two separate attacks occurred on Tuesday night in Dafo and Quartas communities. And senior reporter Funam Joshua has details. Residents of Dafo and Quartas communities in Bukos council areas of Plateau State woke up to the sad news of an invasion by suspected bandits in the areas. The two villages witnessed separate attacks launched on the locals by the invaders at night. Seven persons have so far lost their lives following the invasion as confirmed by the state government. However, the swift response to the distress calls by the troops of Operation Safe Heaven to the communities have been commended by the state government. The government says the move helped in preventing the attackers from achieving their mayhem on other target communities. We had two separate attacks, one in, uh, in Quarters and then uh, the other one in Dafu. So, so far we have a casualty rates of total of seven dead and some injured. You know, so as at this morning everywhere is calm, we are still on the trail of those that will have perpetrated this evil deed and we will not allow them to get away with it. While the Operation Safe Heaven troops are carrying out their mandate of protecting troubled communities from invaders, the locals are encouraged to continue to support the troops with useful information and necessary support to rid the areas of attackers. Funam Joshua, TVC News, JOSS. And senior reporter Funam Joshua joins me now for more updates on this sad incident. Um, Funam, what's the latest you can tell us at the moment? Thank you very much. Just as you heard in the news, uh, while residents uh, in those communities, quarters and therefore precisely in Bokos, you know, you know, uh, doing their usual business activities, the gunmen again attacked. You know, this has been the series, this has been the experience that some of these communities have been experiencing, precisely Mangu, Bokos, and Baraki Ladi for some times. And we've seen the effort of the special task force that helped in reducing these attacks. Some of the locals are sleeping with their two eyes closed until this unfortunate attack on Tuesday that, you know, that, that, that was launched against across these communities. But then we've seen the reactions, I mean, the swift response from the uh, Special Task Force Operation Safe Heaven that we learned that helped in preventing uh, more casualty. You know, the attackers came when uh, the locals didn't even expect it. Like I said, they were doing their usual business activities around 7 in the evening. They launched the attack in Dafu, and then, then around 9 also, they also launched another one in, in, in quarters. So uh, nine people, I mean, seven people lost their lives in that attack, but then we were told that the swift response of the security operatives helped in preventing, you know, more attacks across other targeted uh, communities. And what is the plan in terms of security and the um, government response going forward? Yes, the special advisor to the governor told us that, you know, they deployed, you know, uh, security operatives to those communities, and then they are also uh, on the trail of the attackers, you know, which they assured that they are going to, uh, they will not, uh, they will leave no stone unturned in making sure that the perpetrators are arrested, you know. But then so far we've seen, we, we learned that there is, there is serious deployment right. of security operatives to those communities. Thank you so much, um, Funom, for the update. Uh, Correspondent, senior reporter in Plateau State, Funom Joshua.
Well, let's turn to Ondo State now. Still on security, the operatives of the police command have recovered seven vehicles suspected to have been stolen by a notorious syndicate. The command also pirated a 17-year-old domestic staff, Philip Emmanuel, for allegedly killing his boss, Deborah Adene. Senior reporter Ayo Deji Muradoyo reports. This gang has been operating with a unique modus operandi, targeting the homes of the victims and robbing them of their vehicles. Members of the syndicate are also involved in forging documents for the stolen vehicles, which were then sold to unsuspecting buyers across the country. The unraveling of the syndicate began after a report was filed regarding the theft of a Toyota Corolla in Akure, which was traced to Shagamu in Ongo State, where an additional six vehicles were recovered. On July 11, 2024, a petition was received at the command detailing the, a daring armed robbery where a Toyota Corolla, a Techno POP, five phone, and 1.5 million cash were stolen at gunpoint. Our Special Weapons and Tactics Unit, SWAT, using advanced intelligence, traced the perpetrators of the crime to Ogun State. The police commissioner also paraded those who allegedly killed the president, chief executive officer of Kitchen County, Debbie and Dene last month. Also paraded was a 43-year-old hunter who allegedly shot his friend while having sexual intercourse with his concubine in Ekun Akoko, Akoko Southwest local council of the state. Further on to their conspiracy, Emmanuel and the driver carried out the horrific plan. After locking around till the unsuspecting woman fell asleep, they brutally attacked her. Stole, stole an ATM card and withdrew a total sum of 60,000 naira. So he now pushed me. So now use the cutlass to hit her on the head. So the driver now use a um, small knife to shoot her on her stomach. So after that, the man was beating when we left there. For the suspect, they are going to have their days in court after the investigations are concluded. Ayodeji Muradi, your TVC News, Akure. And to other stories, following the FCT High Court ruling ordering the Independent National Electoral Commission to recognize Chris Imumole as the national chairman of a court party pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit, an emergency net meeting has held at the party secretariat in Nigeria. Speaking at the emergency meeting, the acting national chairman, Chris Imumole, said the party will engage in programs that will put the party in the political map of the country. Mr. Imumole called for the support of all the state's representatives and members of the party. I think that the party is destined for greatness. It's an holistic meeting to talk about our party and to give confidence to all our chairmen out there to make them know that the new leadership of our court is not a leadership that will victimize its own people. It's a leadership that will grant um, freedom to its leader, to, to its state chairman, to operate legitimately and progress the party. It's a leadership that is open for every member who want to engage in the new done politicking to come in and engage in politics through our court party. Our court is the new hope for Nigeria. Our court is a party ready to ensure that we, we pave that political pathway for those who actually intend to engage in politics. An Islamic group, AXA Nigeria, has called on Nigerians to recognize the Israel-Palestine conflict as a humanitarian crisis rather than a religious one. Director of the organization, Rashid Atta, and other Islamic leaders who made the appeal in Ibado, also asked African governments and world leaders to implement the International Court of Justice 19th of July 2024 ruling, which deemed Israel's action in Palestine, uh, Palestinian territories unlawful. An average Christian in Nigeria will be supporting the Jews against the Palestinians, forgetting that there are quite a number of Christians in Palestine who have been harassed, tormented, and who are also Arabs. Who are Arabs and they are Christians. The Jews don't want to hear anything about Christianity. So what is going on there is not a religious war at all. It is just a coincidence that majority of the Palestinians are Muslims. 
But among them, we have a lot of Christians. You have churches in Palestine. And during this war, a lot of churches were raised. There used to be a Palestinian minister who was a woman, who was right. minister in Palestine, a Christian. I don't want us to see what is happening in Israel, between Israel and you know, Palestine as a religious war. It is not a religious war. This is genocide. This is humiliation. The, the expectation of the public is justice and freedom. But the question is, when will our enough be enough in the question of the Palestinians? The public is after justice. But if justice cannot be taken with ease, I think the world should be able to leverage that justice in their different capacities. And back here in Lagos State, state government has advised young persons to take advantage of its various initiatives towards impacting them. This comes as the National Youth Council of Nigeria held a leadership workshop themed Youth Digital Pathway for Sustainable Development. The Lagos State Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Mobolaji Ogulende, admonished Nigerian youths to adopt a mindset centered on possibility and abundance. Mr. Gulende noted that the government is ensuring that young persons get the needed encouragement to thrive in, its, in a tech space. The young people in general have a role to play, full stop. And I say this because uh, when we look at the demographics of, of uh, citizenship uh, uh, across the world, the, younger, the young people uh, form a larger percentage of the citizens in uh, every you know, nooks and crannies of the world. In Lagos, to be precise, uh, we, are, we say there's a population of about 30 million people. Uh, we say that young people form uh, about 60 percent of the population. If we look at those numbers, it means uh, the younger generation between the ages of 35 uh, are about uh, 17 to 18 million. Uh, this is a large number. It is a large number not to ignore. It is a large number to pay attention to. It's for them to seize today to build their future because everyone has a tomorrow. But that tomorrow only arrives with what you do in the present. So youths must have a defined dream. As we speak now, we have huge deficit of um, training and um, technological orbs within our state. So we must create temporary technological orbs by way of training our people and collaborating with relevant stakeholders within the tech space. Well, that's TVC News at 4. For more updates on the stories we're monitoring, you can visit our website, www.tvcnews.tv. You can also follow us on our social media handles, on Facebook, Instagram, and on X at TVC News NG. And on YouTube, or live at TVC News Nigeria. Thanks for watching. Coming up next is Spot Desk.